Hey, what's going on everybody and a warm welcome back to the Whiskey Cove and on today's episode we are joined by Shane and we will be reviewing Wella Single Barrel. Let's see if it's worth the hype. Run the video. <coughs> All right then folks, so this is a fresh crack. Shane, if you want to get pouring us some whiskey here in these glasses. So if you haven't already, folks, go over to our website, thewhiskeycove.square.site. Link will be in the description to check out the shop here for some of this awesome glassware that is etched with the Whiskey Cove. But on today's episode, we are reviewing Weller Single Barrel. So there is a few Wellers in the Weller lineup. I don't know how familiar you are with this, Shane. So you have Special Reserve. Okay. You have Weller Antique 107. All right. You have Weller 12. Uh, well, a CYPD, well, a full proof, and then well, a single barrel, no particular order. I also noticed you have most of them right up there. Yes, they all, there's also one called William LaRue Weller, which is kind of like the antique, uh, the Buffalo Trace antique collection, so it's the really difficult one to find. Uh, like it comes out in lotteries every year. Kind William like LaRue? Yeah, kind, okay. of, kind of like the Pappy Man Winkle, so that, sure. so, that sort of rarity. We haven't got that, we're not going to try that. We are trying well, a single barrel. <laughs> This is coming in at 48.5% alcohol. Uh, what does a single barrel mean, Jishin? Do we know? I'm actually not entirely sure. All right. Still novice. No, no, of course not. <laughs> I just want to make sure that you, you know, you're, we're all on the same page. So a single barrel means that this whiskey came from one barrel. So most of the time- One we, single we, barrel? One single barrel. Yeah, it's funny how that works, right? <laughs> so most of the times, you know, all the whiskey is like put into one. Okay. And blend it up. Yeah. But with this one, it's a single barrel product. So. This well a single barrel and maybe another well a single barrel may taste different. Okay. But you know, they generally have the same sort of age. And you could probably uh, have like, what? how many bottles out of a barrel? Uh, so probably, but anywhere, depending on the ABV and kind of like the yield, probably around about 200 is a fair Oh wow, well. okay, that mm -hmm. much, right? Yeah, I think it's like 55 gallons. No, is that right? That'd be like, something a like 55 a gallon drum. I mean, yeah, I guess it would make yeah, sense. 55 yeah, 55 gallon yeah. barrel, yeah. And obviously with evaporation, <laughs> Oh. So Angel Share, which is evaporation from the barrel. And then also the devil's got to take his cut as well, which is the whiskey soaking into the uh -huh. barrel. Probably lose quite a few gallons there. Yeah, so okay. I, when I was doing a tour of Buffalo Trace down there, and I asked them uh, how much did they, you, did they lose? The, the, the Pappy Van Winkle 23, the 23 year old Pappy Van Winkle. Yeah. I asked them how much do they lose to Angel Share and Devil's Cut. And they said that every so often they'll open up a barrel to pull the whiskey out and there'll be nothing in there. Zero. Zero alcohol in there on the all summer, that, all that they, time they've aged for whatever reasons for so long. And bear in mind that they pay tax on all the barrels every year. So they, they've lost so they money lost on money on their own. Oh, they're wow. paying tax and there's nothing and inside nothing, of them. They can't even sell it. Yeah, it's just, right, you know, just, it's just it went and that far. Pappy as well. Like. Yeah, Pappy of 23. <laughs> right. uh, however, let's get into this review on this okay. Weller single barrel. <laughs> so this, uh, all the Weller single barrels are proof to 48.5% alcohol. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Buffalo Trace's mash bill, or we did mash bill here. The bottle itself is exactly the same as the other Weller bottles that you see around here. It has the foil on the top. It is a cork. It's a pretty slack cork on yeah, this it's one. Slack it's an awful uh, cork pop. This is a new pour. This is the first time I'm ever trying mm -hmm. this whiskey today. Uh, I'm not a big fan of like that brown orange color, but the, mm. go the gold writing is always pretty super cool. On label wise, you mean? Yeah, yeah. label wise. Okay. I just don't like the color. <clears throat> I think it just looks better on like the black and the reds and the greens. I like the blue. Yeah, this orange. Not, yeah. not a big fan of that. But. <clears throat> Uh, let's get into this whiskey, Yushin. So what are we looking like on consistency and color in the glass here? I'm first noticing that um, it's a little more thick, so when you swirl it, it will stay up. The consistency will stay up on, on the glass, and uh, it takes a little bit. So I, I see a little more thickness on okay. that. So you're saying that the whiskey clings to the glass and looks yes. a little bit thick? Mm -hmm. Then as far as if you're looking at color-wise... It's quite light, isn't it? Yeah. In terms of whiskey, yeah. uh, whiskey shades, uh, shade colors, or yeah. colors of whiskey, it's a, kind of more of like a, a copper or like a orangey color, isn't it? Yeah, like kind of like the label almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually not too much of a bad uh, right. crossover. Maybe that's why they did the label that way. Okay, let's go in for a nose there. Don't smell too much, actually. Yeah, she's a little muted, and it's potential because you know it's a fresh crack. But generally, you know, you, you get more that like, kicks up out of the glass. And like I was saying, this is the first time for me and you know, yeah. you know, trying it today. I do. I'm picking up some fruitiness. Maybe yeah. like a cherry. Yeah, I definitely get a cherry on there as well. It's more of like, um, like you, that's a pretty really prominent note from Buffalo Trace whiskey is this cherry. Okay. Um, 
all they're all I've talked on the channel a lot of different types of cherries. Think of like a bacon cherry is like more sweeter candied. Yeah. And then like a darker cherry, like a maraschino cherry is kinda of like more a little bit hot as well oh, yeah. with it. But I think with this one it's definitely heading in the candy cherry direction. And there is a bit of oak presence there on the nose. You do get like a really nice wood note. Nowhere near as much as I get on the Wella 12s. I think there's a lot more of the oak note of the Wella 12s. Yeah. yeah. But with this, I'm not sure what the uh, the year age statement is on this, but I think it probably says it's between eight and nine. Obviously that's an assumption and we might be wrong. I'll put it on the screen, but usually Buffalo Trace don't give <coughs> away much of their information about their whiskeys. Okay. Why would they not? I don't know. You know, maybe because they're so happy and they've done such a good job with the whiskeys, they don't want to share that information. Okay. You can try to find some of it online. Kind of like a secret like, recipe type thing. Yeah, really want exactly. Well, we, can spec it, yeah. we can speculate. Like, yeah. It's like uh, KFC, you know, a secret blend of herbs <laughs> and spices. Wellers. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Like, I, I like actually, it, it, as you continue to smell it, I'm picking up more and I'm, I'm smelling that oak that you were talking about, which mm -hmm. I didn't at first, so. Yeah, there's not really any spice. There's a little bit of like vanilla -y, buttery note there as well. It's not too sweet right. of a whiskey. Yeah. Like, yes, you get some of that cherry and it's kind of like a candy cherry, but it's not, it's not too sweet in the glass at yep. all. But all in all, there's not much going on there, if I'm honest, sure. on the nose. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you said that might be because it's a fresh crack then? Potentially, but it's, you know, you <laughs> still should get more notes than probably okay. what we're getting. Yes, the, the ABV is 48.5, but that's still good enough. You know, it's right in the range where you pick up some really good What if you lost something because of the, that loose cork on this? <laughs> Potentially, you never <laughs> know, right? Uh, cheers, man. It's going, for a, it's going for a drink, yeah. So my first thoughts, it's actually not too sweet on the palate as well. It's actually more drier. Mm -hmm more of a, and it has a little bit of spice as well. So when I think of like a drier, spicier whiskey, yeah. I kind of associate that with maybe like tobacco, <coughs> and flavor too in yep. tobacco. Yep. It has that kind of zing on the tongue there as well. Um, just not much sweetness carrying through no, there at all. I don't. There's a little bit of oak age, but what, anything you're picking up specifically? I don't taste or? any sweet at all almost. Yeah. Um, but I do, I do taste that dry, dryness, and I don't know if, <clears throat> I, I feel like I could associate it with a dry wine, and I'm not oh, a yeah. wine connoisseur by any means, but if you ever had a dry wine, mm -hmm. you know that that almost empty feeling in your mouth once you put it in, and <laughs> that almost sounded weird. But we go in for one more. Yeah, and that makes total sense with the dryness relating to oak, uh, to wine because uh, the dryness of wine comes from the oak tannins from the barrel, and then that would share the same with bourbon as well because you're using uh -huh. a fresh a fresh American oak barrel as well. So it's exactly the right note to be thinking about. And I'll say the first drink seemed a little hotter than the second drink. And I think it's one of those things that it just takes a couple, like maybe even a couple seconds, if not minutes, for your taste buds to almost acquire a certain sensation to that. Mm -hmm. um, it was almost lingering, that hotness, but oh, yeah. you, and usually it doesn't linger too much. It, it'll, it might be hot, but it goes away right away, but yeah, it kind of lingers it's a little bit. It's, but it, it, doesn't travel, <clears throat> it doesn't travel down. Right, the no, yeah. It's just all just yeah. in the mouth. Like there's no, yeah. there's no Kentucky hug. There's no boom going exactly, down. Exactly. Yeah. So that that lingering is mm -hmm. just in the mouth, not. The it doesn't go down the throat. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's isolated to the palate, right? Yeah. Um, let's think about the finish there. Oh, as we're nearly done with this. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, thinking of the back end with the finish. That oak does travel travel through, and there is still a little bit of spice on the back end there. Mm -hmm. With wheated bourbons, you might get some like um, like a wheat yeah or a cereal note, or maybe right. some grass. Not really getting that. <coughs> There's nothing off putting in the whiskey at all. No. Um, I think that it's a pretty easy sipper. Yep. I think that's fair to say. You know, uh, it, it probably drinks. It doesn't drink higher than the ABV for me personally. I think at uh, 48.5, I feel like it probably drinks more like a 43% alcohol. I actually think it drinks a little lower than you know, I, what its label state And is. I also wonder if um, this would be good chilled. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not on the rocks. I could see like straight. Still, still being straight. I think yeah. you did a video um, five, yeah, five videos old, ago or something. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, had the, whiskey you had the three, three right? Yeah. Right, yeah. straight. Or neat. How to order whiskey right. three times. Yep. Yeah, neat, straight, so, and then on the rocks. I could say um, straight okay. for this. So shaking up a little bit of ice and then straight down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So having it being a little cooler, I think that will level out the hotness that oh, lingers yeah. that we were talking about, lingers in your mouth. Even though it doesn't travel down your throat or anything, it, it, it would maybe level that out. And I think I think it's it. You know, I'm really liking it, to okay. be honest with you. So a couple of things we need to talk about today. Okay. So we need to do value for money, which is a letter grade between A and F. Okay. A being the best, F being the worst, and then a score of 100. So zero, awful, 100, this 
beautiful hair oil bottle, okay? okay. We're gonna <clears throat> switch it today. We're gonna do score first. So I want you to think of a score between zero or 100 for this bottle of Wella Wheated Whiskey. And I'm gonna I, let you go first. I, so I, I, I think, I don't know, if I wouldn't call it biased because I, I'm not used to drinking Weller and I really oh, yeah. am actually excited to be drinking this right now. I would say that I'm, I'm going to score this pretty high, primarily because it's probably one of the more um, uh, high quality, higher quality whiskeys that I've actually realized tasted. Because again, I'm still novice okay. and I'm, I'm at the beginning. I have a small collection that doesn't really match up to this Weller okay. itself. So so if you didn't have the Weller label on it, and I give you just sure. a glass of whiskey, or you bought it at a bar or something, I want you to score on that. I don't okay. I don't want you to think about the label. I don't want you to think about the story or okay. you know what you do so or don't have. Make just, sure I don't just, know it's Weller, right? <laughs> just just the juice that's in the bottle. Like we're, we're, let's try to give it as, as best as we can, you know, uh, in terms of a clear One to a hundred, right? I know it's difficult because, yeah. you know. Yeah. One to a hundred. I'm I'm going to go with I'm still probably getting at seventy five. Okay. I'm gonna go with seventy five. Um, again, I'm I know seventy five doesn't seem too high, like out of a hundred, sure. right? What is that a C? Well, it's just kind of C minus. Potentially, yeah, it's just kind right? of on your scale of the whiskey you tried, right? Right. Um, I don't necessarily like that lingering burn in the mouth, okay. right? I, I do like the fact that once you drink it, it has a great taste afterwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I mean the aftertaste on this is amazing. Yeah. But per, if I have to change something of it, maybe chill or on the, on the rocks, and I, God forbid, put Take a little note, water right. in it. I don't want to do that. Sure. Um, that's why I'm going down a little bit, okay. right? But not too much. Yeah. So no, I, I think that's and and when I say twice, I said 75. I think I'm mean, you know, more like between 75 and 80. I, I'm potentially oh, yeah. closer to 80 even. Okay. So <clears> final. <throat> Score, because you see me jumping around a little bit. 77.3. Uh, okay, so 77, I'm going to round down for even numbers. Yeah. Point three. Uh, so for me, uh, again, you know, whiskey's all about opinion. Um, I was hoping for bigger things from this bottle of whiskey, oh, okay. I'll be honest. I think this whiskey has disappointed me a little bit. Oh. Uh, I think it just drunk a little bit flat. There wasn't much going on in the nose. Okay. It was a little bit tame. It kind of reminds me, um, obviously it's a different mash bill, but it kind of reminds me a little bit of El Matili. So when I first tried El Matili, it kind of didn't set up to kind of its reputation. And it's also another whiskey made by Buffalo Trace as well. So for me, uh, I'm gonna give this a 59. With, oh, that low? <laughs> yeah. Oh my uh, gosh. I think, you know, <clears throat> this, this is probably I think it's kind of in, well, a special reserve category for me right now, which is, you know, like I said, really disappointed. I think that the nose, there's nothing really too much going on in the nose. Maybe a little bit of cherry, some sweetness there, maybe the cherry sweetness, but it wasn't really sweet on the palate. Okay. There wasn't much consistency. There was a little bit of heat there as well, just all across the yeah. board, just a little bit flat. And, and I think that potentially the effects of, the such a large difference between your number and my number is that you are, I, again, beginner over here, so sure. I, I'm not entirely sure what we're looking at and as far as quality, especially that you've tried, what, five or six different kinds of Weller? There's only right? one I haven't tried. This is the only one you haven't tried? No, there's so. only one more I haven't tried. Oh, only one more. And and this is the only one I have tried, okay. right? So, um, well, that's maybe fine. that's, yeah, that's it. Fine. Yeah. That's I don't think we need to talk into the score too much yeah. because you know it's already yeah. obvious of where we're coming from with that. I will say out of the wellers I have tried so far, I would say Weller 12, 107, full <clears> proof <throat> are all better than this. And the only one probably worse is the Weller Special Reserve. We haven't tried the CYPB, but uh, you know, so far this has left me lacking a little bit. Okay. And maybe because I know how much it costs <laughs> as well. Maybe oh. that's because Maybe that's subconsciously, you know, I don't, I don't want to hear. which is why we flipped, which is why we flipped <laughs> yep, the value for yep. money. So value for money. So recommended retail price. If you can find one of these, uh -huh. I've never seen one in Colorado, but if you can find one of these, you're probably going to be paying about $60, $70 MSRP. I would say it's probably not worth that okay. then from that point. And we need to, uh, we need to give it a letter grade based off that MSRP, not how much it's worth. Okay. So uh, how much these sell for? On secondary is about eight hundred dollars. Can you say that one more time? Yeah, it sounds these sell for about eight hundred. See, that the, can't be right. No, yeah, these sell for about eight hundred dollars, and I massively overpaid this. I paid. Hopefully, my wife isn't watching. But I paid about three hundred fifty dollars for this. 
Okay. Yeah, uh, because I've never seen it in Colorado. <clears throat> All right. And I went out to Arizona. We were down there for the weekend, and this was at a store, and the guy was selling it for three fifty. And like, I'm never gonna get find one. So I was Wait. like, I'm just gonna pull the trigger on it, hoping you, it would be better than what it is. And but you you actually made out, even even though I know you're not sure. entirely favorable to it as far as taste wise and everything. But yeah. um, if if it goes for about a hand, and you got three hundred fifty for it, I guess yeah. I think it's still a good deal. But well, yeah, you know, obviously. Uh, it would have been better if the whiskey was good. It could be one of those bottles that sits on your shelf for a while because well, you yeah. not pour it on a Yeah, maybe we, we would just do some blinds with it, mix it up a little bit. <laughs> sure. Maybe, you know, if we do a well of blind, it will do better blind, All potentially. Right, yeah. But value for money on MSRP, A being the best value and F being the worst, I'm gonna give this at MSRP around $60, $70 a B. B? Yeah, it's a well of product. Yeah. Uh, it's a single barrel, you know, it has a lot of history and, you know, I, yeah. we, when I give letter grades, I like to talk about maybe the bottle and the whiskey yeah. more than so the rating. I, I was actually reading that a little bit. Yeah. And, um, uh, so, you know, we can go into the, like, the opinion of how the bottle looks and kind sure. of like the reputation that it has when it comes to value for money. So around 60 70 dollars, this is a, an everyday buy and for me it's a B. I think it's okay. for what you get in, in terms of the story, the bottle, I think it's a B. Well, obviously I scored high on the, the number yeah. round, but um, I, I'm gonna go with probably the same, putting it at a B, maybe oh, yeah. even in between. I mean, can I do a B point five? Uh, B plus is that what that is? B plus. Is that what you're saying? Probably, probably go with a B plus. Oh, yeah. A B point five plus. B and uh, um, for the same reasons as I said before, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what these taste like. Sure. I don't That's know fine. the the feel, the the consistency, or anything yep. like that. But I, what I do know is that I can enjoy a pour of this off the shelf, or I mean off my shelf, like at home, like yeah. after after a day of work or something like that, I would be able to enjoy that, yeah. yeah and so, it'd be a good whiskey. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, obviously folks, if you see this on the shelf for MSRP, you're gonna pick it up. Personally, for me, I wouldn't pay $350 again for it, but that's just what happens when you're a bourbon lover, you make stupid decisions and then regret <laughs> stuff afterwards. Yeah. I'm already then, starting. Uh, yeah, exactly. So as we drink through the world's whiskey, one glass at a time, cheers. Cheers.